I'm Kate Austin Avon, and my business is Advocate. The elevator speech on that is that I empower artists, small businesses, startups, and nonprofits with the marketing tools they need to succeed. That's web design, graphic design, um, and a little marketing help, PR, and that kind of thing. And I'm also a painter. Um, I work in mixed media. I also make trash and jewelry out of upcycled materials. Each person in the United States makes four and a half pounds of garbage a day, and that's twice what we made 30 years ago. And that packaging adds 29 million tons of non-biodegradable waste to landfills every year, and that 11.8% of all U.S. annual mun municipal solid waste is plastic. So this is some of my trash and earrings. Um, and uh, so here's like I cut the Triscuits off of the Triscuit box. And um, here's one where it's like paintings I didn't like on that Yupo paper, that plastic paper. Like a photograph, some styrofoam, t like a Tupperware lid, some cardboard that I drew on. You throw something in the trash and it goes away. It's never really away. It's in a landfill somewhere. And I picture it being like dumped into this, you know, beautiful landscape with like deer frolicking and stuff. And I just, I get really upset about it. So I try to make as little trash as possible in my life. And um, that's where the inspiration for the trash and jewelry came from. Um, so I'll cut up um, interesting packaging and um, I'm really only saving tiny little pieces of trash from the landfill, but it means something to me. There's my Dr. Scholl's gel inserts, but it also has some of that Yupo paper, which is interesting. Sometimes on those, uh, those paintings that don't turn out so well, there's like a little piece that looks cool. You can cut that out and use it. Um, these are my taco earrings. So <laughs> it like just add beef, um, which is funny because I'm a vegan. A lot of my artwork is autobiographical. So this is my sister. And um, if you go into her house, it's like a gallery of like portraits of her. And it's a little creepy. I mean, like people go over and they're like, what is this, a shrine of like, yourself? And I had the same thing because I would do um, a lot of self-portraits when I first started painting because I was always around. I didn't have to go find a model. And so if you went into my apartment when I was like 24, it was just like pictures of Kate everywhere and it's a little weird. So um, I do like to paint my family members. Um, again, it's just, you know, sometimes just having feelings that I want to get out, and it's also just that I think they're the most interesting people because I like to, uh, I like to think about genealogy and how everything's just, you know, this variation on DNA. I've got a lot of portraits of my family, and actually, a lot of the art um, that I've made recently is just kind of stuff that's inside that I need to get out. It's like exorcism making art for me. This one um, is of my Papa John. He didn't always look like this, but um, he had uh, cancer and he was jaundiced toward the end of his life. And it was just an image that I needed to get out of my mind. And my mom was like, why would you paint that? That's horrible. That's not how I want to remember it. And I'm like, I know, it's not how I want to remember him either, but I needed to get it out of my head. And it was just this um, really powerful thing that I needed to, to exercise. That's when I'm motivated to make art. When I'm happy, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna enjoy my life. When I'm upset, I need to get it out, so I, so I make art. And this one is called Purple Accident, and it's actually the sister piece to that other one. That one's called Purple Intention. That was the one I was painting when I dropped a bottle of ink. One day I was washing my hair and went whoosh, and I used to have really long hair. And I went whoosh, and it just made this like awesome mark on the steamed up glass of the shower stall. So I was like, that mark is amazing. How can I replicate that in a painting? So um, I cut off a piece of my hair and messed around and dipped it in the inks and went whoosh, whoosh, so that's one of my hair paintings. Today I'm going to um, 
let the kids play with some uh, mixed media. We're gonna use UFO, which is a plastic paper, and we're gonna dump inks out on it and spray it with water and spray it with rubbing alcohol and dump kosher salt and um, lay some different materials down and let it dry and see what happens and um, just completely have fun and make a mess and experiment. I think everybody's born an artist. I have a two-year-old son, Henry, and you can just see that kids are born with a creative streak. Like, they just, you know, they want to make things. And somewhere along the line, their own self-doubt kills that. And it's only a few people who are, like, encouraged along the way that, you know, turn into artists. My hope is that through abstract play where it's not like, oh, I can't draw, I'm not good at this. And they're just kind of playing with uh, texture and color that they feel like they're artists and that they feel encouraged and that maybe they continue on with their creativity. When I was a teenager, I was in the art room. And luckily, I, I had that encouragement from my family and from my teachers so that I, I knew that I was an art kid. And I, I'm glad I had that because I had a rough time in high school. I, uh, I suffered from depression and I went through some rough stuff. I'm really grateful that I had art to get me through. So this means a lot to me to be able to hopefully give some teenagers who are always dealing with rough stuff about you know self-confidence and fitting in and finding out who they are um, to, to maybe give them a, a way to express themselves. So you see these little textures show up in all my paintings, you know, just from the, the materials that I'm using. You can see some of the salt speckles and this is the um, plastic wrap that I laid in there. And then I'll also go through with rubbing alcohol and because this is a plastic paper, you can erase off of it. So I go in and, you know, wherever you see kind of this, this white is, that's where I've erased. But I really like to go with the flow and um, I really think like, you can only control your art so much. Like some of it just is kind of flowing through you. Sometimes there's these moments that happen and it looks amazing and I always wish somebody was like watching me paint, you know, like come here, I'm like come see this, what I'm seeing, it's so amazing. And then it occurred to me like I could take a picture of this because when it dries it's totally different. I had this series of photographs of the process of painting that I had in a show um, called The Flow, appropriately, because you can see some of this like webby texture, and that's from laying cheesecloth in it. But like sparkly things that are happening. Some of it is me spraying rubbing alcohol on it, and some of it is me putting kosher salt in there, and uh, the kosher salt is bigger chunks, so it's more noticeable than just regular salt would probably just make a blob. Um, but I like doing that and sometimes I don't pick off the salt afterward because it makes it look glittery and pretty. So it's kind of like a sculptural process like where you you take away and you go back, you take away and you go back. And here like I erased and then went back in with watercolor paint. What I hope to take away from this experience is um, really just enjoying watching that and um, seeing what they come up with. Uh, seeing how they might build some confidence in their in their own inner artist and um, it's always interesting I mean this abstract stuff it's just you know everybody's a winner so it's exciting to uh, to think about seeing kids this age especially um, feeling a little confident and I really hope that um, that they do Hi, I'm Ariana. I'm Hannah Yarder. Adam Burgess. I'm James Davis. And I think the title of this piece is Lightning and the Sun, because this side looks more like a storm, this side looks more like, well, not a storm. <laughs> if I had to pick a title, I'd probably say uh, Fantasia, just because the music from that is what's going through my head as I create it. My masterpiece, if this were pizza, I would not eat it. I'll just name mine Titleless. And my favorite part of this whole painting process was uh, just throwing different colors onto the uh, 
paper and seeing what would happen. Color. I think my favorite part is just manipulating the the patterns and manipulating the, the ink to go to different places. And I think that was the funnest part, is just feeling the fluid just going through the paint. Probably seeing the mixing of the colors and the different shapes that they can make. My website is advocate.net, so A-D-V-O-K-A-T-E dot net, and um, that's where you can find me online. <laughs>